and welcome back to another episode of Stellar Sound Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Williams, and today I have a guest with me, as I usually do. Ladies and gentlemen, this man hails from Spain right now, but he's also lived in Germany. We'll touch on that a little later. This guy, as you know by Stellar Sound, is a musician of a very nature. I won't tell you what he plays or how he plays or what he does. He's going to tell you guys himself. Ladies and gentlemen, I've listened to this guy's music for a little bit. I had to before I interview him. And I must admit, I am a fan of what he does. It's just, it hits me in your soul. You feel it. You get those chills up your arm. It is one of the best sounding musics I have ever listened to. And I listen to a lot of music because this podcast forces me to. But anyways, guys. Without any more further ado, and without any more jokes, ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce to you Orlando. Orlando, how you doing? Hi. Everything okay over here? Just Every- enjoying the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. All right. So before we dive into the interview, I have to do a good old reading. Ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is brought to you in part by The Corruption of Kavastar. Oh my god. I have been reading this book since I got it from the Netherlands. Oh, I am so obsessed with everything that comes on. Fae Games, F-A-E Games, is one of the best gaming places out there. Like, this is so well written. It's like a storybook I would read to my children that they would probably get nightmares for, and then I would have to play them some of Orlando's music, put them back to sleep, because lord, like just down to the simple nitty gritty, look at this design. Oh my god, the detail that goes into this is disgusting. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want your own copy of The Corruption of K-Star, which I cannot recommend enough, please go to FAE Games and just download the first chapter. It It's intoxicating. I would read the back of it, but nobody wants to hear me read that for now. So, <laughs> And that was our paid production. Back to Orlando. Orlando, tell the fans what is it you do. Yeah, I play the guitar and I'm the lead singer uh, of my own project. I have to say also that, that I'm the only member of the band now. Oh. So that, that's easy the boss, right? But yeah, I used to play with, with a band when I was living in Madrid a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And it felt very good, like feeling like that vibe and rehearsing with, with like very good musicians. Now I, I focus on, on my lyrics, the, the song writing, um, and trying to improve, uh, my stuff and yeah, and take care of my voice to, to do it. Listen, I know about taking care of voices. I'm a stand up comedian, right? And I have a naturally deep voice and so do you. So we get kind of grovelly when we talk a little bit, right? So it gets, uh, it gets a little too much. I always have water nearby in my vicinities to grab just to make sure. Do you, uh, do you put salt in your water? No, what I do is like, at least before the concerts, uh, I used to grab a, an apple to get my mouth like, I don't know, like bigger and flexible and whatever you want to call it just warm it and up then just like green tea and i don't know love it love stuff it. like that warm things okay <laughs> so you had mentioned that you're now a one-man band right after for whatever happened what does that mean for you going forward in your future productions that means uh, that i can plan like easily my steps that means rehearsing uh scheduling the time i want to rehearse and and also moving my stuff, my instruments, my my guitar in this case. It's everything easier, although you're not able to get that impact uh, while playing live, right? Like having like a solo guitar or, I don't know, like a drummer or keyboards. That can be an issue, but at the same time, it's, it's something you can work better with when you're alone. Of course. So does that mean you're taking applications to be part of your band? I have no skills, but I'll still apply. <laughs> yeah, you, you're welcome, actually. <laughs> you would be very welcome. I'm looking for a, like a synthesizer, keyboards, a uh, man. So, yeah, it would be interesting, actually. If you, you want to get more presence while playing live, you need to control like Ableton, for example, or that kind of software. So you can work with more like instruments and virtual sounds to create like an atmosphere, depending on what you, what you play. Right. But in my case, that's something that, that I feel it's a like lack of, of, I don't know, that vibe or like a bigger sound, or I don't know how to, how to describe that. But. 
I'm not too sure. Kind of like the, the ambiance, maybe. Is that what we're trying to go for? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The ambiance. Uh, okay. See, I'm not much of a musician myself. I can only play the triangle, that little thing, back and forth. That's the best I can do with an instrument. So if you're looking for that guy, right here. Orlando, tell us and tell everyone, mm -hmm. how did you get started in music? I could say that, that I, I loved music from the beginning. What's the beginning? Well, when... I used to go on vacation with my parents in in our old uh, Seat Ibiza car, listening to to the Beatles, all in, like all over again, like the same cassette. And I don't know, I felt in love with with that kind of music. That was like the beginning to okay. to get drew to this world or theater. Mm -hmm. No, I get that. It's you're definitely impacted by your immediate surroundings and being with your family in a positive environment the music was playing everything was just going you know what i mean yeah yeah that's right and after that just like listening to music listening to the radio and just like i mean like over the table and every single surface that i could find and yeah that's why uh, i started to play the drums mm -hmm. before before the guitar and what came after that Sitting in the drummer's seat and now in the driver's seat, I believe is what you said at one point, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 that's right. I mean, sometimes I, I miss playing the drums, but uh, I didn't have like a real chance to to say what I wanted to say from the back. Right. So with the time, I, I thought, yeah, why, why not? Why not? Exactly. Giving Just... a shot to that. And listen, I'm a fan, so you keep doing you until you improve, until you can't. Yeah, I, I wait for that. No worries. Another question for you. The local scene and where you're from, you've, you've lived in a, in a few places in Europe, as we discussed, Germany, which we'll get to later, and in Spain. What are the local scenes like? And as an artist, do you adapt to those scenes? Yeah, well, if I have to, to say something about Spain or Germany, I think I, I could easily focus in, let's say, Europe. Mm -hmm. Because I feel uh, for an amateur musician, at least at the beginning, uh, the scene like looks uh, alike. Like, meaning how difficult it is to get into the, I should say, commercial circuit or all over when your music is not so catchy or so, I don't know. Like, mm, we have now the, a couple of courts that always work, mm -hmm. right? To attract people and everything. So how is the scene here in Europe? I, I would say that without some proper contacts, you can grow, but it takes like a lot of time. So if you, if you are not capable or if you if you are not patient to work and just like because you love what you do let's say so a little bit poetic it could be frustrating it can be mm. as artists we have to be susceptible to change whether that be on an international level or a domestic level from where you're bred now when you went over to germany an entirely different country what was that music like compared to where you were originally for me, uh, living in, in Germany, like specifically in Berlin, it was like a, a new beginning if we talk about music, because until that moment, I didn't play the guitar uh, and I didn't sing like alone in front of the out, uh, like a uh, public. So it was something completely new. Like until that moment, I was playing the drums with different bands, like in Spain and in the south of Germany. So for me, it was everything new. Like. Uh, attending some open mics on Monday and Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and being uh, nervous like every every single time I, I had to step in into the stage. Um, it was just like everything new, like making connections, talking to people in English, and being shy at the beginning. You know, <laughs> we're all shy, even us comedians, man. Like every time I hit the stage, I just I get nervous. I'm like, I've done this set before. What am I nervous about? Yeah, I still get butterflies on my stomach and I love it. I would not change that feeling for the world. Now, I'm going to speak a little Spanish to you and hopefully you understand. In 2016, you recorded your first wow. EP and that was called Los Monstruos del Lago. For us English folk, 
Can you explain to this gringo what that oh, means? You, you did it great. <laughs> what does Sorry. Los Monstruos del Lago mean? Uh, Los Monstruos del Lago, it's uh, the monsters uh, of the lake. I thought so. Uh, I named my first EP, EP uh, mm -hmm. like that because in Berlin there are a lot of lakes and there are also like a lot of monsters. I can explain that, of course. Please, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, we can't finish the the conversation right now. Just like in Berlin, there are a lot of monsters, so that's it. As in in other big cities, there are a lot of people, right? We are a lot of people living together. Uh, you can face like very good people, uh, nice people, talkative people, but also there are evil part. You know everything that can happen, like mostly during during the nights so, or. You know, killings and you know all that stuff that happens like all around the world not just in berlin i'm just talking about that because i, I was living there right mm -hmm. so that's yeah that was the, the main reason i i called that to to express different emo emotions even when i myself uh, was not that evil but also a little bit as like as talking about like uh, human nature i don't know if if you can I feel like I do. I feel like you're just talking about your album or EP in this case is just a representation upon society in which you were living in at the time, both literally with lakes and metaphorically with monsters. Yeah. That's how I interpret it. I could be entirely wrong, but uh, to follow up with that, you released in 2019 alongside a multi-instrumental musician from Venezuela, which my friend is from Venezuela, so that's why I know a little bit of Spanish. I still suck and know I will not be speaking it. Tell us about that EP and that recording and that process and influenced from another Latin country. Like, explain that. I'm so curious. Yeah. As a singer songwriter, I have to say that sometimes it's difficult to let people in. M meaning, like, you have a, like a, an idea of what you want to do. And then if you, if you want to give, uh, like creative freedom to the musician that, that are playing with you, you have to be ready to that shock for that shock. And that happened to me when I, when I met, uh, Thomas, Tomasito, uh, because of course, uh, you can feel like that vibe from Venezuela and, and this multi-instrumentalist, uh, stuff, uh, he was bringing in and at the end it worked. You know, like talking and okay, it's, uh, put some some limits, uh, but without uh, limits, but learning space uh, for the people to be creative and to bring something from themselves. Right. Okay. So that whole creative process was essentially because he must have felt it his way too, because he must have been meeting a guy from Spain and was like, "Hey, this is gonna be good," and you're meeting him from Venezuela and you're like, "This will be good." And you guys have like different sounds, but if you can make a mesh, that's essentially what music is, especially you're drawing from two different places, double the ear span. I think that's pretty smart. Now, tell the fans what you are currently working on and what you have released very recently. Yeah, the last couple of songs that I released was uh, a year ago. And it was after like a very... Uh, difficult and yeah, personal process. We would need to to start to talk about mental health and that kind of of stuff that brought me to what I what I did and the kind of music and atmosphere that I tried to to create back then. Uh, it was like a kind of uh, depression process. So the music you can imagine, uh, it's like a mix of dark atmosphere. But after a couple of years going through something like that, you can also feel like something emerging from the hole or like, um, it's always difficult because people normally ask me, okay, what kind of music do you play? But I, I think it's always better to listen to it. There are no specific labels to describe that. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of like poetry. How can you describe that? So. Perfect answer. Now you touched on something which I find a lot of musicians, and I suppose just entertainers in general, really latch to, and that's the idea of uh, bringing mental awareness to music, and how music is very impactful for those who suffer from depression, anxiety. 
mental awareness. Orlando, what does music mean to you as both a person who enjoys it and a person who gives it? Yeah, I would say that the part of music I love the most is that the fact that you you can let people know that they are not alone. So that they are not going through something that other people went before. So it's a kind of, I don't know, to be close to, to people that you physically are not. That's how I feel when I listen to music and also when I compose or when I write or even when I, when I play on a stage or something. Is there a song in your repertoire that means the most to you because of this experience? Sorry, you mean like a song that could describe better? No, no, out of all the songs you've written and performed, is there one song that sticks out to you where you're like, ah, this song is the epitome of everything that I feel towards music? It's a difficult. It was a good uh, one and very difficult at the same time. I would say that like a song that it's about to be released. Ooh, um, teaser. With, with, within a couple of months or three. That one would explain pretty much what, you, what you're asking for, I think. Like this kind of uh, uh, utopia, I don't know, the point uh, where utopia and the normal and common daily routine pair or get together. That's perfect, man. Like I said, I'm a, fan. So far, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm a fan of yours and I cannot wait to listen to this new song, this new EP, this new everything that comes out from you. Just to switch gears ever so slightly, we're going to take away from a little bit of the depressing side of obviously the downside of music, but we're going to lift it up a bit. We're going to sing a falsetto, if you will. We're going to switch gears to Orlando. What do you do in your spare time? You have a South Park figure, and if I'm not mistaken, that is Stan. Are you a fan of South Park? I used to be, yeah. I mean, now I don't, I don't watch like uh, TV a lot, but I, I really used to like South Park. Sadly, I, I was not mature or old enough that said by my parents to watch South Park. Yeah. So yeah, I really loved South Park and yeah, but I didn't expect that you could get to, to figure it out that it was a, a character from South Park actually. <laughs> yeah. He's there. My dude, I, uh, like you, my parents were like, no, South Park. But when I was allowed, buddy, I caught up so quick. I downloaded every season. I was latched. And then I started engineering and then they kept going and I still haven't caught up yet. So I'm like eight, nine seasons behind. But at one point I was lockstep with them. I was, whoo, South Park was my show. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really love You had discussed that you play football and for North American friends, soccer. Is football like a release from you? Is, is, is it a stress relief? Is it fun? Is it competitive? What is football to you? And does it help you write your music too? Football was always the thing, even even before the music uh, stuff and passion. I, you know, like a lot of uh, children, I, I used to dream with the fact that I could uh, play like in a very high yeah. division, you know? And yeah, with the time, I think I, I was lucky to find out my other passion, that it's music. So I think football and music for me, like, what uh, walk together let's say um that can be uh, an issue and actually it was because if you want to focus on one thing to to improve like faster let's say uh, if you're doing a couple of things at the same time like it can be a problem but yeah football i mean i i already over uh, the 30s and and i'm still needing that power and to collide with other, I don't know, other people. And it helps me, I think, to, to get the balance between uh, soccer and what it means, the competition and everything, and then music more like softer, maybe. Um. That's brilliant. I was going to say, there's a, a comedian who recently passed away, rest in peace. His name is Paul Mooney. Now, this gentleman said, as in creative, as someone who entertains, if you are ever in a slump for writing music, performing music, comedy, acting, whatever it is, go find live entertainment that will reinvigorate your slump. So 
He's like, go to a comedy show, go to a concert, go to a sporting event. And he's like, if you were entertained, turn your phone off and just focus on that. And he goes, because watching those people do what they love will rejuvenate you to do what you love. And he goes, it's not cheating. And he goes, everyone has their downtimes. So I think with you playing football and keeping that little passion alive back when you were knee high to a grasshopper, thinking that you could lift the Liga trophy for, I'm going to assume, Real Madrid. I don't know. Maybe Sevilla. One of the teams. I don't know who you favorite Barcelona. Either way, point is. If, if you mean defeating Real Madrid, yeah, I would be in. Yeah, but the, anyway, that's not relevant now. Yeah, it totally is. My friend's a Madridista. It's all good. Yeah, no, it's just, it's something that, and I feel like you're doing it right. Like you're enjoying your love for music and then mixing that with your enjoyment or pleasurable pastime with football. And I think that's what makes your music so good is because you're never too distracted one way or the other and you know where your abilities lie. And that is something very hard for people to balance. And you've done a very good job of that, sir. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. It meant like losing a girlfriend and a couple of friends, but yeah, I think I did it. <laughs> Oh, you want to talk about losing girlfriends? Same. Hard <laughs> <laughs> feeling, but yeah, yeah. Getting the balance is it's difficult sometimes. It's it, horrendous. It <laughs> we'll talk about that later in life. That'll be a private conversation between you and myself. So we're coming to a close with our episode very shortly. But Mr. Orlando, where can our fans find you upon social media? Yeah, I would say almost everywhere, all the platforms you, you are supposed to be, if you want to have like some opportunities to share what you do. So Spotify, YouTube, uh, Instagram, although Instagram, it's more like uh, photos and uh, actually just pictures, right? But yeah, I think Spotify and, and YouTube mainly and I don't know, Amazon Music on uh, iTunes, but for like a... Uh, independent musician that it doesn't have or didn't have the success to to get some incomes to rely on you have to be like everywhere exactly in, right. in case it helps. so when this interview is released we'll include all of your social medias for our friends that are fans of orlando follow me on twitter and on instagram my handle is at jus10 williams Easy to find, easy to follow. Orlando follows me on uh, Instagram. Him and I have called each other late at night, just crying about our dispositions. He has a dog, and I'm in love with his dog. Never met him yet, but I'm in love with the dog anyways. Orlando, is there anything else you want to discuss before we go, my brother? He's been very quiet, I have to say. <laughs> he's been a good boy. He's been a good boy. Yeah, actually, he's sleeping now. <laughs> um, About the music or what you do, I invite people to take the time to to listen to to new music not just mine of course but because i think we we are living in a society in which we we want everything and right now and at the end of the day i think we just have the time to digest some hits and ready formula stuff and that's a pity although that's uh, nice as well we should uh, invest more time to to find to discover new music and I, I agree. Would say that. <laughs> that is a very bold statement. There's too much music out there and not enough is being consumed, just like comedy, ladies and gentlemen. So, anyways, that's my time. I was your host, Justin Williams. I had an amazing guest today, Mr. Orlando. You can check him out on all social medias. I don't know about Twitter. I didn't. Do you have a Twitter? We didn't talk about that. Do you have Twitter? Yeah, Twitter, but I don't use that much. Doesn't use it's Twitter. Or to keep uh, updated with, with the world. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. Yes, that. So you can follow Orlando on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Like I said, we'll put out the links in the description below. This will most likely be going, obviously, on YouTube where everything else goes. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for our time. I'm Justin Williams. This was Orlando. And keep living the good life. <laughs>